Are you ready? Oh, yeah! Strap yourselves in for the Gaming Hub. With your host, Tyler. You can't handle the truth. Graham. The force is strong. And Steven. You cannot be serious! Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome into the Gaming Hub. This is episode 129. I'm your host, Tyler Singh. Thanks so much for joining us. And I'm here with our two co-hosts. As always, let's start with Graham. Graham, how are you today? Uh, I'm fine. I'm a little cold because my furnace is given out. And I don't know, if not everyone can relate, but the temperature has severely dropped off. But I am surviving. I am huddled up in my room with a hoodie on. Got to appreciate the hoodie weather, which I do. Um, other than that, I've played some games. Mainly, I've played Overcooked 2. And I'm getting pretty deep into that now. And these levels are becoming chaotic. Things are disappearing. There's rafts. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, more people, it's a lot easier. I, I'm pretty sure, unless you're just going to be complete chaos and people are going to be in your way. But they have a lot of little inventive ways of like working together and... They find a way to keep it interesting. It's not the same levels and the same stuff over and over. So uh, definitely kudos to them. Um, other than that, I've played a little bit of NHL 19 because uh, I'm a Leaf fan. You guys all know this. And the Leafs were doing really well. They're still doing well. They just lost last night. Like, we expect <laughs> them to win every game, right? <laughs> but uh, I kind of got inspired. I'm like, I'm going to play a game as the Leafs. And I actually pulled off a win online versus very rare. So, uh, you know, there's some magic in the air of uh, being a Leaf fan right now. Yeah, Graham, we, we saw how rare that can be for you because we once watched <laughs> you allow, like, 44 goals in one game. Um, That's not true. It was 42. And confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, anyway, exactly. uh, glad you're having a good week, Graham, minus the, you know, no heat and such. But uh, let's say hi to Steven. How are you? You have free heat this week. Yeah, it's it yeah, sucks. Sense them this way. <laughs> yeah, you can have it. I mean, uh, like it started with this week with like fifty mile an hour winds on Monday, or up gusts up to fifty mile an hour, thirty to forty five, just regular. So that did absolute wonders for my allergies. Let me tell you. And you know, I think I got a cold some part this week, but I never had the sore throat. Thank God. Uh, I don't know if that's because I, I got a like a humidifier fan thing over the summer to help cool the room down. And I don't know if the that using the using that overnight has helped keep the sore throat from happening. But I, I avoided the sore throat, so I didn't actually know if I was sick, but I blew my nose a lot this week. Um and then, you know, it now turned into ninety degree weather in October. So that's so much fun. Love it. Yeah. Um and as far as games go, because this is a gaming show, not a weather weather show. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> as as far as games go, I haven't played a lot to be honest with you. I played some Forza. I switched to Spring. Um, it's you know it's nice and rainy and very pink flowers and stuff on the ground and that's cool. Um, and I played a little bit of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. We ended up getting it the person i game share with <laughs> tyler yeah. and and i played like you know 20 minutes of it and honestly it's hard to get so invested and i want to play it a lot but there's a game coming out next tuesday called paw patrol that i just can't <laughs> wait to yeah. get my hands on so i don't want to play anything else until that game comes out wait and <laughs> can we get your paws on it that's right graham <laughs> that's right Good one Good thank one. you thank you i had to put uh, that in there <laughs> so you know it's, it's gonna be interesting to play games this weekend because i'm not gonna want to play anything because i have the big game coming out next friday that i just i can't wait for my body is ready um and i just it's it's beyond ready to the point where you know they didn't uh, make red dead a game where if you bought like the extra legendary edition or whatever you'd get it a couple days early, but I would have paid a hundred dollars to get that game on Tuesday instead of Friday. I'll tell you what, but yeah. anyways, I enough about a lot of people would have. Yeah. yeah I, 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 agree. I think they missed out on 40 extra dollars in sales because I, yeah. I agree with you, Tyler. They, they could have sold that on Tuesday. Yeah. But whatever. So, um, Tyler, what, how are you? I'm good. You? I've had, you know, a decent week. Um, you know, game wise, uh, some Forza Horizon Four. I've uh, been having fun with that. It's to me, I, I think Stephen, you agree. It's kind of turning into that game of like when there's nothing else I really want to play, and I just kind of want to relax with something. That's the game I go to. 
Um, it's, you know, you don't have to play it for a long time. You can play it for a half an hour. You can play it for three hours. It doesn't really matter. So I, I really love that about it. And you can just go in and do a bunch of different things or something for everybody and have a great time with it no matter what. So loving that. Um, Madden, as always, uh, for me. And uh, I'm really excited because the Halloween promotion starts, I think, tomorrow. If not, uh, tomorrow on Monday. And uh, which means I'll undoubtedly probably spend, spend money. Bucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I hope it's tomorrow because that'll give me something to do over this weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah, to be, to be honest with you. They, they could make a lot of money if they make it go live today or tomorrow. Yeah. Monday, I'm not going to spend money because by Friday, I'm going to be sunk into Red Dead. So. Yeah, but still having fun with that. That's another game where I can just jump in, do a couple challenges, whatever. And, you know, I, I had a uh, um, uh, Madden franchise game for our, our community last week uh, against Chummy K. Man, congrats to him. He had a good win. And for, like, for one game, Steven, I know you can attest to this. I... I could not miss kicking field goals like i was hitting like 55 yarders and i'm the guy who's like missing extra points half the time so um by the way twitch chat i see you've discovered our new uh sub emote and that is awesome so i enjoy that <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and also they let us know that the halloween specials started today so Start as today. soon as we're done awesome. with this i might go look at that and yeah, same here. spend a couple dollars fantastic so yeah, I'm with you, Steven. I'm, I'm also looking forward to uh, the biggest game next week, Paw Patrol. And, no, I mean, we, we know what it is. We're going to talk a ton about it in this show. So, um, in fact, a lot of our new segment is going to be dedicated to uh, Red Dead and Rockstar in general. So, anyway, that's my week. Uh, glad everybody's doing well. And we hope you're doing great out there. And we'd also love to have you join the community. So, there's a few different ways to do that. You can go to Facebook and look at the Gaming Hub forums there. You can also go to Twitch, where we're broadcasting live right now, and look up TXH Gaming Hub on Twitch. From either of those places, you'll get a link to our Discord server, and we'd love to have you join that as well. we got a lot of good conversation going on there. Uh, we have channels dedicated for all the different games that our community plays a lot, and we'll be adding a Red Dead channel next week uh, to go on top of the ones that are already there. So there's those three things. Uh, we do have a Twitter at TXH Gaming Hub and a YouTube, the Gaming Hub Podcast on YouTube. If you'd like to help support the show, we'd really appreciate that as well. And thank you so much to uh, the people who have done that for us already. And especially I want to call out two new patrons this week, um, Blake P. and Brian P. And if you'd like to join them, because tonight we're doing our monthly patron drawing and if you go in for as little as $5 a month, you're entered for a $60 giveaway every single month that you can spend. We'll get you gift cards for whatever console you want. You can spend on whatever you want. You can do games. You can do movies. You can do music. Whatever it is that you want to do, uh, it's there for you uh, to enjoy. So we have a patron channel, patreon.com slash gaming hub. And for as little as $2 a month, you can get exclusive content that we put out at least a couple times a month. We've got a Forza Horizon 4 review episode coming really shortly. And we put out sometimes movie episodes, stuff like that. It's not always gaming related, but we have some fun with it and get you some extra content. So uh, for as little as $2 a month, you get exclusive content. For as little as $5 a month, you get uh, an, an entry, at least one entry into the monthly drawing for patrons, which we'll be doing tonight. So... On top of all that, if you're a patron, you uh, you get an extra clue for our holiday giveaway, or you get an extra guest, sorry, for our holiday giveaway, and you get an extra clue each month. So our patron clue for our holiday giveaway is going to be posted next week, by next Friday. By the time we record 1.30, it'll be up, and for as little as $2 a month, you get visibility to that, and the only people that get to see that extra clue are patrons. So what's our holiday giveaway if this is the first time you're listening to us or haven't listened for a little bit? We're having a 12-week contest where each week we're giving away a clue because we have something in mind. Either a person, a character, a game, an object in a game, something in a game. It could be any of those things. And we're going to give clues once a week. And the clues are going to get more specific as we go. Leading up to the last episode we do before Christmas... And the first person to correctly guess it, using only the Google Forms document that we have on uh, Facebook 
in our Facebook group and in Discord. The first person to guess it correctly wins a Nintendo Switch, which is awesome. That's the biggest prize we've ever given away on the show. We're happy to be able to do it, and we're only able to do it because of the support people have given us through Patreon and through Twitch. So if you want to help support us through Twitch, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you get a free Twitch Prime sum to use every single month. If you choose to use it on us, we'd love that. We'd appreciate it, and we'd be super thankful. If not, use it on somebody, help somebody grow and achieve their goals. All right. Uh, I think that does it for all the getting all the business out of the way. But I do want to mention one more thing before we go into news, and that's for the holiday giveaway. We're going to give you, we're going to kind of tell you the sound one more time. So this isn't the actual clue. But you want to listen for this sound during the episode. And when you hear that sound, that means that we're about to give the clue away for that week. You won't know when the clue is going to be. We're not going to do it at the same point in every episode. We've done it at different points the first two. So it's always going to be at a different point. The only way to get that clue is to listen to the show every single week. Okay, but there'll be another clue later in the show tonight. All right. Guys, let's head into news for the week. In the news. And let's start with a great article that was written by, uh, that was published by Vulture this week about Red Dead Redemption 2, where they interviewed Dan Hauser, the co-founder of Rockstar Games. And I want to start with this quote. And we'll kind of talk about each of these points as we go through. But, quote from the article. The first Red Dead Redemption is about a man, John Marston, trying to save his family from his past. And the second one is about a bunch of outlaws who've been living in the Wild West as it's getting tamed and the pressure that brings to bear upon one particular man, which will be Arthur. Changing times, changing friendships, changing places, changes emotionally and geographically. It's more like Thackeray than Hemingway, at least in terms of scale, with an array of freaks, weirdos, and needy people, and exciting people, for variety, end quote. Steven, you're as excited for me as, this, uh, uh, as me for this game. You know, does that make you more excited, just kind of hearing it summed up that way in those couple sentences? Uh, yes. <laughs> like, I told you guys many times in the last, especially month, like, I don't want to know, I mean, obviously I've read everything, and at this point it's so far gone. I don't want to know anything because it just keeps building my hype level to the point where this weekend I don't want to do anything. Because all I want is to play Red Dead Redemption 2 next week. And actually, a family thing came up next Saturday <laughs> that I, it's very important I will go to it because in the grand scheme of things it's more important than this game. But it's really hard to to tell myself that because I, I, I kind of want to miss it just so I can play Red Dead 2, Red Dead Redemption 2 all day on Saturday. But I'll go because I'm I'm a good, you know, grandson and such. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I'm so, 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 so excited for this game. And, like, I'm, like, I'm upset that the, the um, what's it called? Like the, oh, my gosh, the word is, I'm blanking <laughs> on it here. I can't help the, you, man. Not the, it's not I the can't deadline. Help you, I don't know where you're the, going. There's, the reviews are not allowed to be shown until like Thursday at like 4 a.m. Like I want that. I thought at first, when I first read it, I thought it was this past Thursday. And I'm like, yes, I get to see it in two days. Like I can't wait two days. And then I reread it and saw that it was next Thursday. And I'm like, dang it. And I used words that were not dang it. Dang it. (laughs) (laughs) But I'll keep it family friendly here. I am pumped for this game and everything I hear about it. That vulture article is amazing. Go read it. It's very well done. Uh, highly recommend it. All right, Graham, I went to Steven first because he's excited for the game like I am. You are not. You are not getting this game, so you said that many times. <laughs> um, did this do any, because I know you read it, like you looked at it. Um, did this do anything, and we'll get into the other points of the article in a second, but just kind of this summary, did that do anything to sort of change your opinion? Well, not really the summary because basically it's a summary and it's just telling me there's a lot into it and stuff like that. It's not until like I got into like watching some of the videos and trailers that it made me realize this game may be pretty amazing. Like you're talking about how Rockstar is not known for like pushing the boundaries on graphics and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But from me watching it, I was watching it on my laptop, so it's a bit smaller of a screen. But mm-hmm. it looked amazing, like seeing like the horse like, like going through the snow up in the mountains, and 
just like the seamless so like um like cut scenes and stuff like it seems really well done by the videos but reading this statement nothing's like oh i gotta like play this because like i played the first one and i know who martian is like a little bit and i never really got into the story so no th- this doesn't really persuade me but reading parts of this article which we'll touch on or whatever yeah. um definitely things definitely i'm like okay maybe maybe i've been wrong you know i usually don't admit that i'm wrong because it don't happen very often so i'm not good <laughs> at admitting when i'm wrong yeah but maybe i'm wrong about this but like i said i don't really know the story about the first one so we'll we'll see like i said okay. nothing's official yet okay it and I don't hate you. on it. Everyone, it, it at least, everyone just assumes I hate it, on it. It at least warmed you <laughs> up. Well, we'll get to that. Yeah, but yeah that'll it, be it, later in the show. Yes. <laughs> but it, it, at least from the sound of it, it warmed you up to potentially maybe picking up the game on sale later or something like that. Yes. Okay. Yep. No, All right, for sure. It'll never drop below $30, just so you know. No, because GTA never has. But, yeah. <laughs> all right, but speaking of that array of freaks, weirdos, and needy and or exciting people that you'll run into in the game, uh, this game was researched using hundreds of books and films but nothing recent because they didn't want to be accused of copying anything recent so but they've drawn influence from all sorts of books and films hundreds of them to kind of create a somewhat authentic feel for what the wild west was like at the end of the kind of wild west era that includes 700 voice actors used 1200 motion capture actors and like i said 700 of them with dialogue the script for the main story is over 2,000 pages long. And NPCs have an 80-page script each. Like, Stephen, I'm going to go to you in first here. Uh, How awesome is that? Like, that is epic. That's something that, to my knowledge, we haven't seen in a game. No. um, I I haven't heard of anything like this. I I remember it just... It's so, like... I know this game came out a while ago, but Oblivion had something like 18 voice actors. So the fact that there's 700 voice actors for this game is is insane. Like that that's probably there's a lot of people in this game. I, I'm guessing based on that number. Um, I assume people aren't just mimicking nature sounds with their voice. I'd hope not. So so you assume all 700 are used to talk or create just like background noise. I bet you a lot of it is like uh, noise in the bars and the taverns and just out and about. But I. Dude, I am pumped for this game. Like, everything I've heard about this game and all this information, 2,000 pages for the script. Like, that's insane. That's two And, that, and that's just for the main story, not for yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. So, wh- I they say that it's going to be 60 hours because they cut about five yeah. hours of content recently that just didn't fit. Is I, I feel like that has to just be the main story because... All the side quests and stuff you can do and all the just getting lost in the world or playing like, you know, Liar's Die or uh, what's the the knife game with the hands like when you chop your... I know the song, but I'm not going to sing it here. But I forget the name of it. Like, you know what I'm talking about, right, though? Where you have to go in between the fingers? Yeah. Um, And then also yeah. poker. Like, all of that and then hunting. All I expect this game could run you in, in the 150-hour mark. Like just with all the stuff I'm seeing on it. I, I'm assuming the 60 hours is just main story. Cause honestly, 60 hours for everything that this is saying seems small. And yeah, I, six, I don't, 60 it has is just to be main story. story has to yeah. be just main story. 100%. It is. 100%. So I am so, I am, I am just, I'm excited to get lost in this world. And I think I actually know what I'm going to do this week. I'm not going to play games. I'm just going to watch Westerns uh, to get me <laughs> pumped. <laughs> and that's before, that's before we even talk about Red Dead Online. Which will launch in November. I don't care about that. So, yeah, but I mean, I want to see what little, it is, though. A little, I do, I do too, I do too. So, I want to see how they built on GTA Online, all that stuff, and hopefully, it's a, you know, it's an experience that'll draw me in and keep me playing for a long time. Yeah, I just hope it's easier to find like cooperative stuff because everything that I found on GTA Five Online, we got into it really late and we didn't know anything about it. <laughs> yes, I remember we tried playing it one day and it was a <laughs> lot of like races and there wasn't a lot of i didn't even think we found a team deathmatch game or you could just run around the world and that's fun for a little bit but i want to do like takedowns or like heists with my friends like that's what i'm interested in so i i don't know if i just missed it in gta online i tried googling it i couldn't find any anything like that so i'm hoping i'm hoping we can figure it out 
Well, um, I, I feel like we got into it way too late. Oh, yeah. And because when we say that we tried to play it, the three of us went in and tried to play it <laughs> literally like, what, four three five months, months ago? Yeah, yeah something like yeah. that. And that had already been live for four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost not so, even worth mentioning that we tried it. No, it was, I mean, it was, it was a total failure. <laughs> and it was probably more our fault than anything, right? Because we had no idea what to do. Yes. But finally on this, the, the other thing I want to mention from this article, uh, Hauser says... Rockstar might do another Red Dead game if, quote, this one does well <laughs> enough and we think we have other interesting things to say, end quote. That's how so modest, not? eh? I so know, modest. how do they I, not? It... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think this game's not going to do well enough. I just don't see any way this game is it fails. Maybe it's just because I was such a big fan of the first one that I think this is the most hyped game um, this generation. Uh, did I steal your thunder there, Tyler? Because we we had talked about this before, and I yeah. don't mean to steal your thunder. Cause, Excuse me. Um, so I don't want to. It was Tyler's Tyler's thought. So I, I'm not stealing yeah. it. I'll give him credit there. It was a good good idea because he asked me. He's like, "Is this your the most hype game from this generation?" I said, "Yeah, uh, probably. Like overall, I mean, there's one more game that I'm more hyped for personally, um, but there's nothing that's matched it so far, and nothing I can see matching it." Besides maybe The Last of Us 2, if it comes out this generation, which is possible. I, I think it will. I, I do think that the will first come one. out. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I think they'll follow the same kind of release schedule as the first one. They'll release Last of Us 2 as sort of the culmination of the generation, so to speak, mm -hmm. right before the end. Mm -hmm. But, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Let me ask this, though. Call of Duty, and we're going to talk about it here in a little bit, but Call of Duty's been wildly successful this year in sales. Do you think Red Dead 2 will outdo Call of Duty Black Ops 4 in sales? Ooh. Long term, absolutely. Short term, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, uh, I, I have a hard time saying yes, but it's also hard to say no. It's like one of the, it's like, you know, in football, when there's those that one spread you just don't want to touch, there's that one game you're like, it could go either way. That's this in the video game world. Like, I, it could go either way. It could outsell it or it couldn't short term. And it, yeah. I, I can't say for certain either way. Um, I, I think Because Call over... of Duty, like, Blobs 4 has, is a good game this year. Like, it's a great game. Mm -hmm. So, it, and it's selling, it's selling really well. It's... This is tough, dude. I know I didn't Graham, answer that question at all. <laughs> Graham, what do you think? You know, I think I agree with... Well, I'm not going to say I agree with Steven because I don't know what Steven is agreeing on right now. But <laughs> uh, but I would say short term, I don't think it's going to sell as much as Black Ops 4. But in the long run, like I'm going to say this is going to be like another GTA 5 where it's like the top selling game, like five years in a row or something is always in that list or something of top games because yes. like how many years has been now since uh gta 5 we talked about this uh, five, 20... years. five yeah. years yeah so five years 2013 so i think with all the time they've been working on this and how big gta 5 is i think this is just going to be building off the success of gta 5 like sure it is a bit different of a fan base but overall it's the hardcore rockstar fans and like well, whether I guess you have the cars and there is a bit of a difference, but mm. I think this I think is going to do really well, well in the long run. Yeah, uh, Graham, Graham, just to clarify, I was saying that in the long run it absolutely will sell more than Call of Duty, but if you're talking about like by right now, yeah, just like by January, um, I don't know. And I mean, again, Call of Duty has a head start, and it also means Call <clears> of Duty will probably be on sale for the holidays. Yeah, probably. And I think you're Rocks right. On that. And, and Red Dead won't, so that yep. gives. Um, Call of Duty the advantage, but if we're just talking about first week sales, ooh, I, I well, first week sales is is the one I'd, I'd compare, and that's the one, dude. It it could go either way. It could. Call of it Duty could. did really well. Red Dead Two is probably going to do really well, but it's hard to say for sure. But yes, in the long run, I think absolutely. I, Tyler, so, you go first, but then I have a question yeah. for you. Well, here, kind of similar. Here's what I'll say. I first of all. Totally unfair to compare Grand Theft Auto V sales with Red Dead Redemption 2 sales. Okay. And here's why. A <laughs> couple reasons. Um, 
Is, was that what you were going to ask? But, um, no, no. Okay, so well, similar, similar. Thing. Okay. Actually, kind but, of. But here's here's why. The um, GTA Five got released on two different generations because it came out at the very very end of last gen, and then they re-released it on current gen, and a lot of people bought both, including me. Including, and I me. think, all three of us, maybe. Me, too. Yeah. I yeah. had it on PlayStation 3 so, and Xbox One. Yep. So, I think that, you know, that's completely unfair to compare the two, because that's not going to be a similar scenario. Now, when you compare it to Call of Duty, I'm with you on this. I think that early on, it's a toss Like, first week, it's a toss-up. I think over a three-month window, I think Call of Duty does better. Ooh. Because of... I, I feel like Red Dead is a little bit more of a niche type of genre of game than GTA is. I feel like GTA is their flagship. No doubt about that. Yeah. I personally like the story and the world in Red Dead more. But that's me. I, I'm, I don't think I'm in the majority on that. No, when you, but... When you compare the two. But one sec, let me, let me wrap up on this. But I think once Red Dead Online hits... If that has legs to it, then I feel like long term Red Dead is gonna decimate Call of Duty when we look at it a year from now. Go ahead. Decimate. I was just gonna say. Um, well, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, I was gonna say I agree <laughs> with you on the Red Dead being better than GTA. I I have fun with GTA every time I play it. I every time I played it, and I actually really enjoyed the story of GTA Five. GTA 4 hooked me for a while. I never beat it, though. But GTA 5, I did, because I was I was just enthralled with that story. I, it was good. It wasn't great, but it was good. But Red Dead Redemption's been better, like, story-wise, than any of the GTA games. Um, but, of course, like, it's more niche. Right. There's only been one Red Dead Redemption game. Um, there's There was Red Dead Revolver, but it was made by a different, like, <sighs> company, kind of. So it's not the it, it doesn't count. I don't count I, it. I personally Red... feel that um, the the stories and the characters in Red Dead are easier to connect to because the the stories are more personal to the characters because the world is so much smaller. Yeah, GTA. But, uh, a GTA lot of also the... kind of makes parodies of a lot. Like the characters are kind of parodies mm-hmm. of like. Mm-hmm movie care like come on uh yeah. what was his face the the dude from the trailer park in gta 5 oh my gosh oh, what was the name trevor yeah trevor, trevor. like mm-hmm. it, that was a parody character like yeah hands down and he was very enjoyable he was my favorite character oh actually i enjoyed the main guy what's his face um oh my gosh it's been a while since <laughs> michael I played GTA 5. Yeah. michael michael was my favorite character might as well name the third Thomas. one who's who's the third character franklin i didn't know franklin <laughs> uh, um but, I mean, I'm just, I think the story is better, and I think it will be better than GTA Five. Yeah. The game well, like it might story... not get reviewed as good, but I think the mm-hmm. game will be better. I feel like the story is more grounded, whereas GTA is a little more over the top. And there's nothing wrong with either one. It's just yeah. which one you personally connect with better. And for me, it's that more grounded, sort of gritty story in, in Red Dead. That's for me. Other people love the over the top, you know... Uh, sure. at, you know, aspect of GTA, and that's awesome. I love GTA Five. I do, too. I yeah, do. Well, I, I thought I it was fantastic. Be. So I mean, much so did, like, 90 million other people. So, yeah, the numbers I mean, prove it. Yeah, the, you know, it's uh, numbers don't lie. So, yeah, my question, by the way, just because mm-hmm. I'll, I'll say because yeah. I, I kind of, we hinted at it, was, well, will it get close to GTA Five's numbers? And you're right, I forgot that it was released on two consoles, so I don't think it will get no close. But how close does it get? I think it can hit 50 million over time. I, I agree with you, especially if what you said about Red Dead Online was true and that it has legs, and I think yeah. it will. Because I think Rockstar has learned how to make online good for a long time. Oh, yeah. They keep adding free content, and then they just get the money back with those shark cards, and I know people hate them, but you get a bunch of free content too. So are the shark cards really that bad? No, I... I mean, ultimately, it, any microtransaction, it's our choice whether or not we buy it. Like, it's my, we talked about Madden in the intros, right? It's my choice yeah. to go spend $90 in a very stupid fashion 
on <laughs> bad cards for the Halloween promo this weekend if I choose to do so. But that's my choice. Yeah, Nobody's and I making think, me do that. And it's relative. If you get, yeah. if it's fair, if you don't spend money. So this is where Battlefront 2 failed. If it's fair when you don't spend money, but you do it just to either support or because you want to, like Smite was my game that I spent a lot of money on cosmetics, probably like 500, 600 bucks on it. Um, I, I bought the $100 gems like mm-hmm. once every three months to buy uh, the different skins for the characters or the, the voice packs or whatever because I loved the game and I loved playing it. I played it. I didn't play anything else except Smite for like a year period. So, I again, that was worth it to me because I played so much of that game. So, yeah. I I'm excited for this for this game. I'm excited for online. We'll see they're they're probably going to find a way to make shark cards available in Red Dead. I don't know how they'll do it, but they will. I mean, it's going to oh, be a sure. thing. It'll, It'll be, be something. Horse cards. Yeah, of course It'll be they will. Yeah. Horse cards. Yeah, horse cards. There you go, Graham. Yeah. Um <laughs> <laughs> Don't but think I mean, it won't be there, but but on that point, I just want to say real quick, like, I may choose to spend money on, like, Madden this weekend, right? But it it doesn't give me an advantage. I mean, may, maybe in yes. Ultimate Team it would. Better players than Ultimate Sure, team. in Ultimate Team, but it sure as hell doesn't help me out in Franchise. No. I mean, and three actually, and, it doesn't I'm three and really, three there. really help you online that much, because if you suck and you make bad choices with your quarterback... Yeah. It doesn't matter if you have a 99 yep. wide receiver. You're getting picked off. <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah. going to be a harder throw to the other player. Yeah. And really, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's all it's really, going to be. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, I, you know, if I'm not good at play calling, I'm not good at that stuff, then, you know, it doesn't matter what I have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. And, so. and I don't play Madden, but I can relate on an NHL level because I've faced players or people who've had really good players, like really good cards and stuff like that, and I've still been able to beat some, some. I'm not bragging now. I'm just saying I was able to beat some of them, not all of them. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, I can see you spent a lot of money on that team, especially when it's really early stages of the game. Because you know, over time, that you can get them, and just yeah. by trading and like selling pucks and stuff like that, or mm-hmm. coins. Sorry, um, but yeah, I face people, and their team is just stacked right from the get go. But they really don't know how to utilize them, or mm-hmm. like uses them properly by the so, way is there yeah. anything more rewarding than beating, beating somebody like that oh no. it's awesome it's, it's so a good. great feeling it really it is, is. it's a great feeling <laughs> i mean i remember even back like you know and again this is a red dead conversation not a sports conversation but i remember <laughs> like mlb the show when i got that and i go in and play people that have like on day three of it they have they're loaded with diamond players you know, and, and I'm with them. I'm tied like 3-3 with them in yep. the eighth inning, you know. To me, even if I lose 4-3 to three in that game. You feel accomplished. Yeah, because I if I know that if everything was equal, I'd crush them, right? Yeah. So same thing. It translates to shooters. It translates to anything else. Um, so, again, like, you know, microtransactions, people like to complain about them. I, I feel like they're a necessary evil in the gaming industry. I don't love them, but I, they're, they're here. It's a way for companies to generate more revenue. And, uh, you know, in fact, we just saw a story come out. Well, we didn't include it as a news item, but I just want to mention in passing, like, between EA and Activision, they've generated an additional, like, $70 billion in revenue in the last five, six years just from those service-based things, which include your ultimate teams and the sports games, etc. How do you yeah. argue with that? Yeah, I like, okay, we're going to scrap so, the whole thing. We don't want all... <laughs> so I, I actually want to correct that real quick. They, they didn't generate an extra $70 billion, but they they are worth an additional... Um, I, I don't think it's 70 I think it's like $50. Um, so I take that back too. But uh, $50 <laughs> billion in total worth of those companies between the two of them has been added. But think about that. Like... I think EA's number was like 38 or something. Like they're worth an, an, an additional 38 billion today because of that. That's insane. Yep. Yeah. So they're not going anywhere. We nope. can complain about them all day long. The only way they're going away is if, if people completely stop buying them. Yeah. And, so. and this is where, I mean, it kind of, kind of does lead into our next conversation. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll wait on that. But like us gamers, um, we, <laughs> We can be a little hypocritical, and I, I am I am super guilty of this. I, I say things, and I do things, and they don't always align. <laughs> no. Um, and it's I, because 
It, honestly, it's it's FOMO, um, and I, I use yeah. that acronym just because it makes Graham mad when I use acronyms. But <laughs> it's fear, it's fear of missing oh, out in in a yeah. way, and it's you just uh, it's hard it's hard to be like it's hard to not spend money when you can spend money because you don't want to miss out. You don't want to play the guy mm -hmm. who has a 99 overall team as, when you have an 87 because you didn't spend any money when you're like, well, I could spend money because I, I have the ability to spend money, so I'm going to spend money. And, I mean, my dad used to always say it as, like, money burns a hole in my pocket. Uh, it kind of <laughs> does. Like, as soon as I get it, it just goes their right, out the, <laughs> right out the window. But, so, maybe that's a little bit of that, but, you know, it's not – that bad when it's done right microtransactions I, i'm right, talking about. i agree like i, I can't agree. i can't be super hard on them and i know i was a little from my madden review and i yeah. again i i say i was wrong about what i said there yeah so so let's let's move to the next story we're gonna stick with red dead here but a different type of story so we talked about all the cool positive stuff and now we're gonna talk about a couple things maybe not so good so Independent video game retailers might not get copies of Red Dead Redemption 2 until early November. And to a lot of gamers, that might not be a big deal. But when we think about, you know, these smaller family-owned businesses, which are off, which often, by the way, give you the best experience and the best service. Um, not all the time, but a lot of the time. This is crushing for them. Like, they put so much into advertising the, the, the story you mentioned. Like, one guy putting over $3,000 into advertising for Red Dead for pre-orders. And not getting that game by, you know, for the whole entire first week or 10 days might cost him upwards of $60,000 in sales, which for a really small business is gigantic. Yeah. Um, to their credit, some customers, it, it sounds like a decent amount, have said, you know, we want to support you. We're going to wait until the game arrives there. So if you, first of all, to our community, like if you've pre-ordered this from a independent retailer, you need to check with them, especially if you pre-ordered it on the PlayStation 4, because they've said like, it's possible some Xbox One copies might make it to these stores, but not PS4 copies until early November. So that's first. Second, credit to the people that are willing to support these guys. But before we pat him on the back too much and say that's what everybody should do, I want to ask you guys, and then we'll talk about all the rest of it. Would you wait if this and Graham, let's say for you, like Fallout, okay, a game you're super looking forward to? Yeah. Would you wait a week to get it if this uh, were the case for you? Okay, maybe I'm going to say maybe best case scenario. If I knew the people personally who own the business – and like we're really good friends and stuff like that you know maybe i'd buy it twice who knows <laughs> because i usually would want to play it right away you right? already but... have bought fall 76 twice <laughs> have you not well yeah but that's okay. besides the point <laughs> <laughs> so yeah then if i own two then why wouldn't i just do that then just to help somebody out but no like i feel and the people that do this, I commend them. They're great people, and some people have more patience, or they don't have that much time to play, so they're like, oh, I can wait another week or something like that. But I'd have a hard time, and like I said, if I really, really wanted to support them, then yeah, I'd just buy it twice and maybe just sell it for a bit of a loss, of like 20 bucks or whatever, just to help them out. But overall, I think this is bad. Like, they should... Like, all these big box stores, like, they have tons of profit, and it's not going to make or break their business. So why not take a few from them and let the small, especially if they've been pre-ordered. They should um, warrant or acknowledge or whatever. Uh, it's not what I'm looking for, but all these pre-orders. Honor. Honor. There you go. That's a good word, yeah. Honor. They should honor all these people with their pre-orders. Because I, I think that's pretty low. Like, why give all the profit to the bigger companies? But I know that's kind of how it works. So, uh, I don't know, Stephen. Would you be able to... If this was Kingdom Hearts... Well, even Red Dead. Well, no, we'll Red say, Dead. I think it's fair Red for Dead him. For you. Yeah. But, well, speaking of Kingdom Hearts, that was my personal game that I'm more hyped for than Red Dead Redemption 2 for this generation. Um, for sure. Uh, but... Either one. You know what I would do? And I just came up with this buy now. I would buy it new... <laughs> I would I basically, well, it was while you, before you said that, but yes, it's the same idea. I would buy it new, 
sell it to the game store for like 30 or 40 bucks, buy it new from them. And then they would have, they would have sold a new copy and they would now have a used copy, which that used copy is all profit. So that's what I would do um, for them. So I could still play it early. And then, and then they would now get like kind of double up on the profit. Cause now when they sell the used copy, they're making it's, it's full profit. Um, but I don't have, uh, uh, you like a, a game store, like a local mom and pop game store near me. Um, so I like I can only, you know, visualize this scenario in my head. I can't actually like imagine it really because I I don't have one that I'm like super high on. And someone in Facebook chat mentioned and I've heard this in other places, the way they the reason or at least the supposed reason that they're holding copies is some of these smaller stores tend to break street dates um and release the game you know a few days early at sometimes um and that like sucks for everyone um because now spoilers are like li- or liable to get out on the internet and you know these companies kind of put some trust in and they deserve a little bit of protection but i don't think that's fully the reason why and there's ways to identify who is breaking street date there so I don't know if I agree with that 100%. I, a little bit of shame on Rockstar here. It sucks for those game stores, especially the one that spent like $3,000 on promotional materials and is and is now getting screwed a little bit. And you, you, I think, I don't know if you mentioned it, but they're supposedly losing about, they're projected to lose like $50,000 in sales. Yeah, it's, it's 60, right? up to 60000 Up to 60000 yeah. yeah, that's, that's, that's insane. Pr- that sucks. That, that's... But, you're making for them in some cases. Yes. You know? Like, yeah. And uh, like Graham said, like these are the, the people that are waiting for their local store. Like, uh, you're the reason, like, you know, faith in humanity restored as they yeah, say. Right. I, like, I was going to say like, those people are the goats, man. Cause I don't think I could do it. I, I couldn't, I, yeah, I couldn't do it for red dead and I definitely couldn't do it for kingdom hearts. There, like, there's no minus, way I would do what I said. I'd buy it new, sell it yeah. back to them, buy a new game, and then they get extra profit there. Yep. Yeah. But uh, if if it's if you can only get one, like you can't like buying two copies isn't a uh, financial option for you, which a lot of gamers that's a situation. Yeah. Right. So would you be able to wait? I wouldn't. I, I'll be honest. Not for this game. Nope. I don't think so either. And then they, that makes me a hypocrite a little bit because part of me wants to be like you know hold out for the little guy. Um, but I can't do it. And they, and the, and Rockstar knows this, um, a a a smaller company might not be able to get it away with it, but you know, your Bethesda's, your Rockstar's and any, uh, Microsoft or play, well, not necessarily Microsoft with the quality of games they've been putting out, but PlayStation games, if they tried this, they, they could get away with it because they're that big and it doesn't affect their bottom line that much. And that kind of sucks. Well, and here's but here's the thing. Like, true. I get it that some of these small stores break release dates. Okay, I get it. And I know you want to protect your IP and your release date and the integrity of all that, and that's cool. Is it fair? Let, let's even estimate high, and say that ten percent of these small stores, because I think that's a super high estimate. I agree. Um, break release dates. I think it's probably more like one or two. But let's say ten percent. Is it fair to punish the other 90? No, like, and that's... I think, I think sometimes it's just cost of doing business, you know? Like, you know, movies are in theaters, and pirate copies of those movies appear on the internet while they're still in their first week of their theater run. Mm-hmm. You know, and what do you do? Do you shut the movie down for everybody at that point? I, I just... I don't know. I, I feel like... There's a cost of doing business sometimes, and it's going to happen. And, you know, cost-benefit, is it worth all the people that this is going to hurt just to keep this from happening a little, you know, to to have it happen a little less? I, I don't think so. I don't either. No. So, and I love Rockstar. I think uh, they make some of the best games out there. But... Man, I, I don't agree with this at all, and I think it's pretty poor. And I don't know if it's them or it's um, the publisher here. But either way, like I just I think it's pretty poor. And they're, these smaller stores, 
they depend on games like this one and Call of Duty and you know your your big sellers every year to bring home their profitability for the year. Yeah, like, at it. least silver lining. There is Call of Duty, Battlefield, and Fallout coming out this year as well. Mm. That as long as those three come in, this one won't kill them more than likely, but it still sucks. Yeah, um, because like you said, if it's fifty thousand, that's a lot of money for these small stores. It's nothing to Best Buy and Walmart no. and Amazon. Nothing. No. Besides, like, isn't the the, the profit like margin on video games is what did you say three percent three yeah, it's, it's really low it's probably like five maybe somewhere yeah. in there they're probably making like five dollars on each video game sale so yeah, yeah the, this the margin in in gaming sales is all in the accessories the you know the controllers and the headsets yeah. and all that stuff the the stupid keyboard you plug in and all that type of thing you know into your controller mm. all that stuff that's where the that's where the margin is it's not in the uh like the definitely not in the consoles those have super low margin and not in the games either like i'd be willing to bet that if you like told walmart they weren't getting red dead redemption 2 like on release date they'd be like okay like is two dollars a game like or five dollars a game let's say let's go high and say five dollars a game that's how much money walmart is making on that is that going to be enough to affect them because the people that don't just shop at walmart for one video game and then leave most people so i i don't think walmart would care well here's the thing though like big box stores like walmart and target and best buy and etc etc they rely on releases like this and movie releases Things like that because the idea is, I mean, this is part of the reason that electronics is in the back of the store in every damn Walmart. It's because uh, you, it makes you walk there, you buy stuff on the yeah. way. I yeah, see. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I because did forget about that. people come into that store just for that, right? And yeah. then they end up maybe picking up a couple other things because nobody buys just one thing at Walmart. Well, we try. <laughs> I <laughs> you try, but it's I'm, built. Yeah, most people aren't me who, like, yeah. if I only want this, I'm only buying this. Like, you, you know. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> so, so but I the get... other thing, too, is that these bigger retailers, especially your Walmarts of the world, Amazon, etc., like, they have the clout to say, oh, you're, you're short on supply? Okay, well, if you short us, then we just won't carry your game next time. That's How true. That? That'll hurt them. Yep. That'll hurt them. And, and see, and, and another uh, Twitch user, Casey, Casey Wright, brought up a point. He said he goes to Walmart to pick up games because they're always breaking street date. They release games early all the time. And I have heard of situations like that where the big really? box stores break release date. I've seen it on Facebook. Yes, like they if do. you're in any big video game stores, you, you see it and you're like, where'd you get it at? Some mom pops? No, Walmart. Like, so I, that's why I don't buy that argument that the little stores break release date because the big stores do too. Especially some of the ones in the middle of nowhere that just don't give a flying care. Well, I'll tell you, and I'll tell you Herbie. where it happens the most. <laughs> and I can speak from a retail management background here, right? So when they come in, like, the the cubes that are basically come on a whole pallet, you know, that you put out, which um, Red Dead Will and games like Madden and Call of Duty and stuff like that, they all do. Those are the ones where they break street date because you got people that have no clue about video games, period, right? They don't know. And they're like, well, we got to get this out to the sales floor. I don't want it sitting back here because, you know, I can tell you the culture is we don't want it in the back room because that's bad, right? You're not going to yeah. sell anything back there. Yeah. So they take it out to the floor. They put it out there. They think they're doing good, but it's not supposed to be there for like three more days. And they end up selling copies of it until someone usually some like uh, an hourly employee who makes like ten dollars an hour is like yo i have one of the i have a, uh, a ps4 and xbox one and that doesn't release till friday and then people are like oh and then they take it off so that's <laughs> how that happens but yeah it's i don't know i i'm with you like the release dates get broken everywhere you know just from yeah. stupid stuff yeah, like and you can't take it out on the small stores. No, I don't. And it, and it hurts them so much more than it hurts the big ones. So, anyway, uh, that's that story. That's uh, kind of bad story number one. 
for Rockstar. So the second one I want to talk about, guys, is in passing in that Vulture article, uh, Dan Hauser mentioned that they worked numerous 100-hour weeks. And that kind of took on a life of its own on social media and became almost the story to come out of that Vulture article. So I don't want to talk about Rockstar in particular here because we don't know the details. Nobody does yet. Uh, in fact, Jason Trier came out and said he's already kind of working on, he had been working on already, an article about working conditions at Rockstar. I'd like to see that come out before we make assumptions or anything like that. But I think it's a good time to revisit sort of working conditions in the game development industry in general, because in 2018, one of the things we've seen pop up with some regularity is stories about this. I'll, I'm going to start here. I'm going to be the first to say this. I'm the one on the show that's the hardest on game delays. And like I get ticked off about it sometimes, you, you know, when it's a game I really want to play. And I'm going to tell you I was wrong because if it's forcing people to work like 80 hour weeks, 90 hour weeks, 100 hours a week, just so I can play said video game like two, three months earlier, six months earlier, then shame on me. That's, you know, I, I can wait. The game will be still really fun when I get it in my hands. So I'm going to really try to not be as frustrated with um, delays anymore even though Graham we got one coming up that I know you're really bummed out about I know <laughs> I don't so, want to talk, talk about it I know <laughs> but anyway like here's the other thing I want to kind of mention like you know as more and more and more came out we started to see like well yeah often you have to work over 40 hours a week well I, I, I'm not sure what to say to that because a lot of positions have to work more than 40 hours a week. And it's really hard to tell some people that work for a lot less money. I looked it up today. The average game developer salary is $68,000 a year. It's hard to tell, you know, the average people that work really hard to buy your game. That sometimes work a lot more than that. That, you know, you should feel bad for that. But when you're in like 70, 80, 90, 100 hour territory, that's a whole different ball game. Especially if it's a regular thing. Because the whole live to work or, or work to live type thing, right? So, yes. Graham, what are your thoughts on this? Like, you know, you generally, we talked about this, you generally work like right on average, like what was it, 44 hours a week, something like that? Yeah. Like, what, what are your thoughts? Well, first of all, like... I think if they're getting overtime for this, then it's not as big a deal, but you shouldn't force them. Like it should be a choice. Um, and I'm with you. Like if it makes the game come out earlier for me that they have to sacrifice their family lives and be miserable and it's unhealthy in some aspects as well, then it, it's not worth it. Overall, it's, it's your life. You only have one of them. So there's no point killing yourself over trying to get this product out to sure. It brings happiness to a lot of people and I really appreciate and all that stuff, but there's no need to do that. And no, yeah, I think there should be some kind of like limit and control and stuff like that and give people the option. And because I don't know, it's like you got to work this many hours or you could lose your job because people really need that job right so i don't think it's right to threaten them with that kind of stuff so Agreed. yeah there's no yeah. need from putting this amount of hours no i, I agree and, and they did clarify so rockstar clarified just to clear that up that it was a select number of people who are all senior employees that were working on the script that did 100 hour weeks and that's not how it came across in the article um i don't think rockstar knew it was going to create as much of an uproar as it did but they did clarify it by saying that. So, Stephen, like, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean, hundred hour weeks that's that's pretty damn long. <laughs> um, I I work well. I'd be willing to work, you know, fifty five, sixty hours at my job because I love what I do. But um, even then, that'd probably like be very detrimental to my health. So, I don't think it's a good thing for the industry as a whole that this happens. Um, and it's happens and it's not rockstar. The rockstar is just now the focus because it just 
they're the most recent. But it is not a Rockstar specific thing. Every single company that is in the video game, or most of the video game company or developers, have similar situations to this. Um, like I said, we you know I'll keep mentioning it. Blood, sweat, sweat, and pixels. Like it talks about this in depth for a lot of uh, a lot of game developers. Very good read if you're interested in any of that. Definitely go check it out. And then also we have a review episode of it. Uh, that was that's up. That if you want to listen to that. Um, but I, I mean, I, at first it's like it's kind of gross. You know, you force the people to work, but they say it's only the writers. I don't necessarily think that's entirely true. I I think it might only be like the top people that were working close to a hundred hours. I think fifty hours is probably a like normal thing there. Um, yeah. If I had to take a guess, just probably at most places, especially as we get closer to deadlines and releases, like hours go up because um, you just you know, you have to get it done, but also, you know, you, you, you working on something, you're working on something and you don't want to stop because you just, you feel like if you stop, you ruin your whole flow. So I get that there are people that work like super long hours and just don't realize it. I think that happens in the game industry a lot too. Um, yeah. so I, I can't, I can fault the company if they're forcing them and, and there are ways like to force people to work or with, you know, veiled threats of, you know, canning them for missing deadlines, uh, as yeah. you said, Tyler. Or yeah, because they turn whatever. into a performance issue rather yeah. than not being yeah. here when we expect you to be here. Type. They'll thing. never, yeah. they'll never let them go for not working overtime for free, but they will let you go for not working overtime for free. That just won't be the way it's written in the HR report or whatever you want to say. Yeah. Um, so I, like, the, my first thought was, like, ah, oh, dang it, Rockstar, why you? Uh, but then I, like, I read more, and a lot of people on Twitter, like, Rockstar opened up social media uh, for their, their people, and they, they lifted the ban on it, and they said, like, have at it. And a lot of the stuff was positive. They said they never work closer, close to 55 hours a week or 100-hour weeks, a lot of them were saying, and... So there, there are some negatives, but I think that's with everybody. I don't think Rockstar is the only one that does this. I don't think Rockstar actually forces people. And now Rockstar is doing this thing where they're, uh, they're, they're making it known to their people that any overtime is optional. So I, I, I like that. We'll see if that trend sticks or if that's just to save face. And then behind closed doors, it's like, well, you better or else type of situation. Yeah. We'll see. Um, I'm trying to be positive here. I, I think it could create some good things for the industry. Uh, maybe Rockstar is the one to turn the ship for the industry because I think the industry as a whole has a problem. We'll, we'll see. Uh, Tyler, I know you're more pessimistic about this. You know, you want to play devil's advocate. I'd say the devil well, has enough advocates as it is, but, you know, you do. You. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm not trying to be pessimistic. I'm not. So the... So the, the thing is this, it, it depends on what we're talking about. Like I said, like, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, like I, what I do, you know, there's a culture almost with that company where once you're, especially in management, you're, <laughs> I, I'm going to use it cause I can't think of a better word right now. You're almost indoctrinated to, to have this belief that if you're not there all the time and you don't put in all the hours you're just not committed. And there are people that I see that like spend way too much time there. Mm -hmm. And to me, I've always been a big believer that I work, like I like what I do, but for the most part, anyway, everybody's got days where they hate whatever. Right. But at the end of the day, I'm doing it so that I can do the things outside of there that I really enjoy. You should get some reward out of your job, though, and if you are, like, you know, killing yourself and you're sacrificing all these other things in life to, you know, provide this product that so many people are going to love, is that worth it? Especially in an industry that has really, really high turnover. You know, developers balance company to company all the time. So, I... I'm kind of on the fence with it. I, I want to see more. Like the the companies that are telling people you got to be here and like sleep at work, 
you know, I've always felt like when you look at companies that have like beds at their headquarters for people or like sleeping areas, I don't see that as a really cool perk. I see that as like, yep, I'm going to be expected to be there all the time. Yeah. Like, hey, we got a bed here in the corner for you. <laughs> yep. So, anyway, like, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not necessarily playing devil's advocacy, but I'm not taking the side of the, the companies. I just know that I don't think it's going to change as easily as we might want it to, because at the end of the day, if people get burnt out and leave, there's like an army of people ready to apply for that position. Because here's the thing, like psychologically, people always say, well, I, I'd be so happy to do that. I would gladly work, you know, 70 hours a week just to get to do that. And it's easy to say that until you're actually doing it. Yep. So, I mean, Stephen, we saw, um, and we don't have it to show you here on Twitch, but it's we saw a Twitter thread earlier this week where a developer was saying, like, somebody came up to him, and the, the guy who came up to him was, like, brand new in the industry and was saying, like, I can't wait to do my first crunch and work, like, you know, 80, 90-hour weeks. Yeah, you say that. Let's see how you feel about it, you know, five years in. No, and I, I mean, and I get that because I, uh, bef- I switched to become a math major, um, but I was a computer science major first, and like I wanted to work in video games. I mean, I love video games. You know, it just seemed obvious, right? <laughs> and I, I knew about the crunch. I heard about it. Um, I, I hadn't read Jay Schreier's book yet, but I, 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 I had heard about it based on Twitter threads and other articles and stuff. And I was kind of the same way, the, you know, you know, sign me up type of thing, put me in coach, you know, I can't wait for 80 hours of programming, you know, and you say that when you, when you don't actually understand what that means, cause you, until you're dead tired and then still have to program, like you, you don't know. And it sucks. Like, and I have, you know, basic programming levels. I can't imagine some of the stress that these people are put out under. Uh, so I, I get the thought and I know there are a lot of people because every, every advisor or like teacher or like aide said, don't do the video game, like sub section of the bachelor's degree or whatever. Cause they were like, everyone wants to do it and you're going to take, it's going to take you forever to graduate. Just do whatever you can get a job yeah. in video games getting a degree in like cryptology or like that's your concentration. I forget mm-hmm. what they actually were. It was a couple years ago, but that was the advice. But the fact that they told me that like there, there's just so many people that want to be in the video game industry that yes, I get it. It's mm-hmm. like, what? Well, uh, oh my gosh, what's the word in like war when, you know, you have someone attrition. Yes. It's yeah. just, it, it seems to be a war of attrition in the video game mm-hmm. industry. Cause there's just so many people that, think they want to do it and i say think because like i uh i i saw a few times it's it's something like a six-year average in the industry before people leave like that's yeah, not the, that long no burnout happens really fast there and i'm not talking the game i'm talking like you know burning out in what you do and again like i've said on the show in the past like when it comes to like trolling people in games and, and such like i would never ever want to be the reason that somebody on the other end of that game said, I, I never want to play this again. You know, and, and here's kind of the same thing. I would never, you know, want my desire to have a game faster make a developer say, you know, I, I loved this at one point, but God, I hate this now. Yeah. You know, I, I don't I don't want that for anybody. And granted, there's going to be times you got to put in more time. And that's true in lots of different industries. So that's not unique to video games. But if it's the norm and not the exception, that's where we need to have a discussion about it. The other, the other reason I don't see change happening as fast as we might think or want is just the financial expectations of publishers. That, you know, your um, Activisions of the World, your EAs, your 2Ks, etc., etc., that publish these games, they are beholden to their shareholders. And this quarter in particular, where the fall release window is, is where they need to deliver. And a lot of times they'll say, nope, you're not getting another delay. This is coming out now. Red Dead's been delayed a couple times already. Remember, we were supposed to have this game a year ago. 
Yeah, that was the original remember release our, window. Our, our thoughts were yeah before before the summer. Yep. It was better, then it got moved to what March or April some sometime in there. Yeah. And then it finally got moved to October 26th. Then we're getting an October 26th. So we're getting it a full year later than the original release window. But I do want to pose this question to you. So we see companies like Ubisoft who we hammer on, especially me. I'll yeah, be the you, first to admit it. You hammer on them. Maybe great. We're delaying <laughs> like everything, right? But how much have we really heard from Ubisoft developers in social media? in stories that have been published, anything about working conditions there. Yeah, Maybe I mean... they just more believe in taking the time to get it right without killing, killing. off the team. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what do you guys think? Yeah, I, I think that's a, a viable viable thought. Um, you know, it'd be funny if, if Ubisoft was, was the good guys <laughs> in <laughs> yeah. the industry for that. Yeah. Um, it, it might explain why we're getting some pretty amazing games uh, advanced a bit more. Because when you have people that stay on longer than six years, you know, they learn tricks. Or at least that's in my opinion. You know, it just seems logical. Uh, so, you know, people are saying the Assassin's Creed games have been some of the best games they've played um, in the series. Like with, with both Origins and Odyssey. And, and then Skull and Bones uh, looks amazing based on what we saw at E3. I know... Tyler is super pumped for that oh, game, I am. and I am and remember too. that was supposed to be last too. year too. Yeah, yeah, I am too. So I'm, I'm okay with them delaying games if we get some awesome experiences. Because once the game comes out, you just forget that you had to wait an extra two years for it. Yeah, uh, looking at you, Persona Five. But um, <laughs> you know, I how about last yeah, Guardian? Yeah, sucks. <laughs> yeah, geez, what was that, like eight years? It was supposed to be a PS2 yeah. game, wasn't it? I think so. No, <laughs> um, or at least PS3. But yeah. Yeah, so I can't complain. Like, I mean, I, I can at the time, but it, if it's, I don't want to kill people, and I don't want to run them out of the industry, and that's what I mean by kill. But so I, mm. I don't think it's a bad thing when it's delayed, and these hundred hours a week run people out of the industry, and that's not a good thing. It, it delays progress. It, it's going to keep us from getting some amazing games, I think, as quickly because. Uh, people just get ran out so so fast well plus that's my thought fair, fair to mention graham before i go to you on this like the how many times have we seen big names from big developers go and start smaller companies because they don't want to do this anymore like they don't want it's not that they don't want to make games they just don't want to be in that environment yeah anymore we see it a lot and how many people do you see, like I said, for Ubisoft, and, and now that I think about it, actually, on the Ubisoft note, like, you, when you look at their E3 conference and stuff like that, like, they're super corny and cheesy, like, Ubisoft usually wins the award for that, but at the same time, they kind of give the signal that they're having the most fun, and they bring a lot of their team on stage, like, at the end and stuff, you know, and it almost seems like there's just a, a bigger commitment to people there. And that's all speculation on my part. I don't know. But maybe that translates into the policies they have for, you know, how much people work. But anyway, like, Graham, how many times have you seen a story from a small independent developer like this? Like, uh, that's talking about working conditions and talking about, you know, we've, we've worked, like, so many hours, you know, stuff like that from a small independent developer how many i don't think we have uh no it's definitely minimalistic maybe because like you're saying they leave these big companies and they start these indie companies and stuff like that and i know like some of these companies when they're first starting up they have to put in like some extra time and stuff like that but they choose like they're not forced or whatever because it's usually like, one or two and they just want to get it off the ground but yeah a lot of these little indie studios um like there's probably the reason why they start these indie studios because they're like well maybe more freedom a lot of reasons right so it could very well be the reason that we don't want to be working these crazy hours and i want to enjoy my family life a little more and stuff like that so if that contributes to great indie titles which there's a boundless amount of great indie titles out there so it's good like it's kind of like the good with the bad right from all this bad and stuff we're making people work all this late and they're like well we're just gonna leave and do our own thing well then great things come from yeah. this so 
yeah, I can't say I'm, I wish you didn't do that because with some of these games and stuff like that. But it's good to see that people are actually like not staying with a company where they're not liking their life and they feel like they're stuck. And like people are like, well, I really don't need to take this. I'm like I'm a good good uh, designer or developer oh. or whatever you are, right? Just the people are more confident. So they're like, I'm just going to do my own thing because they see these other indie titles coming out or small studio start and see that they're successful. So they're like, well, why can't we be successful like that? So, yeah, absolutely. And unfortunately guys, we're not going to solve this problem today. No. <laughs> um, and I, feel, I feel like we could talk about it for a while, but I, I, I kind of want to move on to the next story, which is better news. Um, Call of Duty Black Ops 4. A lot of people have been really excited about this game. Like it, it's gotten good reviews pretty much across the board. Uh, more importantly, the fan base seems to be really energized about it, uh, especially about the blackout mode. But Call of Duty Black Ops 4 has broken digital sales records. Uh, it beats World War II in digital sales for any game so far. However, in the UK, physical sales of the game were down 50% from Call of Duty World War II and down 59% from Call of Duty Black Ops 3. So, Stephen, I'm going to go to you here. Like, first of all, is this a sign that we're heading towards the the true adoption of digital purchases? And two, have we seen the last campaign in a Call of Duty game? Who tough one. Number one, a little. I think it depends on the game. Um, your bigger games that you're less likely to like trade off because you're you know you worried they're gonna be terrible or whatever. Uh, yeah, I, I do think that these these games are going to be more digital uh, based, but I still think there's there is a market for physical games, um, and I, people still like trading in. I have gone away from that, you know, as I got a little bit more disposable income, I can I can move away, and honestly, just me being lazy uh, keeps me from buying physical because I don't have to change a disc, and that's pretty awesome. And that has kept me from playing games before because I didn't want to get off the couch and change a disc. And that's super lazy, but it's something that happened. So, yeah, I, I do think for, like, your Call of Duties, your Battlefields, your maybe your sports titles, though sports titles are pretty dumb to buy digitally because you can trade them in and then get the next year's version physically. But, you know, for some reason I still buy all my digital or sports titles digitally. But your your big titles, I think, yeah, digital is, is, is the new thing that we're going to see. As far as um, whether this is the last campaign, no, because I think it's the last campaign for a Treyarch game. I don't think it's going to be the last campaign for Call of Duty because there's still two other developers, and I don't know how much they communicate with each other, between uh, like what their what their plans are between you know Sledgehammer, Treyarch, and um, Infinity Ward, but. If they haven't communicated, then the lack of campaign came kind of late to the party. So I still think we might see some campaign for, like, this next uh, Call of Duty game, which is speculated to be Modern Warfare 4. So yeah. I don't think it's the end of the campaigns. But I do think Treyarch is probably done because they don't need to. Unless Battle Royale mode goes down the drain and then then campaigns might make a resurgence or a comeback. But yeah. I don't know. I can agree with that. Um, I, I think we very well might see a campaign next year because Infinity War is already two years into the development cycle of the game and they may have been working on a campaign. So it, we very we may very well see one next year. But I think three years from now, we might not see him anymore. Now, I wonder though, before I go to Graham here, the like Black Ops 4 made for perfect storm for battle royale because you could have all these environments that were in all the games and people recognize them and characters and whatnot but they're not going to go all the way up to black ops 8 i don't think so when they change away from that from that franchise again are they going to be able to have a, a blackout map that's as compelling for players as this one is and will it make up still for not having a campaign? So, Graham, you you did not buy Call of Duty this year. Did not. Uh, you're you're much more of a Battlefield guy. I'm kind of with you on that. 
Um, that said, I've had fun with Call of Duty when I played it so far. But, like, what what are your thoughts on this? It, is the campaign that big of a deal to you in a shooter, like your military shooters, like your Call of Duty and Battlefield? Um, see, for me personally, if I had to choose, I would... I probably have played the campaign more in different games than just going online. But I know some people that they only buy it for online. Online is all they care about. The online and zombies, which not all the time they have zombies. Uh, as far as me, I, I'd like to see them keep the campaign in because I don't think I would ever buy a Call of Duty knowing that there is no more campaign because... I kind of like that from it. I could kind of introduce you to it and stuff like that. Stories really weren't that great, but I kind of like the progression of like a campaign and stuff like that. I don't think they'll take it away a hundred percent. Like you guys were thinking. Um, and at least for a while, like Tyler was saying, like, like I said, you have different developers. So I think some of the developers are not gonna be like, oh, okay, we're just going to do what Treyarch did. And we're going to get rid of scrap the campaign or whatever, because there are people out there that really enjoy campaigns and stuff like that. So why take it away? Why not develop for both? Like, now you got the time, you got the resources. So I would like to see them develop for both. And I think if they just take the campaign out, I think that would be a misstep, in my opinion. All right, fair enough. Um, yeah. I don't know. I here, Here's how I feel. Steven, I want to see what you think on this because you've played a lot of shooters as well. I feel like campaigns and shooters are becoming more and more and more just a multiplayer tutorial that's about six to eight hours long. And if it's that, I don't know what the value in that is for me. What do you think? No, I, I agree. Um, I don't know if, like, games that were centered around the campaign like halo uh is counts for this I, I don't know if they'll ever go away from it but i do think yeah like the call of duty games for sure and the battlefield <sighs> games to some extent as well have have definitely been and and actually battlefront 2 now that i think about it um that game was yeah. that story was absolutely a tutorial for multiple Pretty much, yeah it was so yeah it if the story sucks like i understand why uh, they'd get rid of it. I mean, they, they put no effort into it at all, so no one wants to play it. And, I mean, Tyler, you're the the one who's completed almost every Call of Duty campaign, and you said yep. you didn't even finish Blobs 3. I and, didn't. like, that says something. I don't yep. even remember it. Especially considering it? that Black Ops is my favorite series within Call of Duty. Well, you're wrong, but that's okay. It's, it's my favorite. I mean, I love Modern Warfare, but yeah. No, I know but, your favorite is Ghosts, but yeah. Yes, well, that and, yeah, Infinite Warfare, and, <laughs> or Advanced Warfare, I should say. But, yes. I I mean, I get it. If it's a multiplayer with or a tutorial with no effort put in, like, why would people want to play that? And that's a terrible excuse to get rid of it because they put no effort into it to begin with, but that's where we're at, so that's where we're going to go. I'm telling you, the the best shooter campaign, although I I will say I like the Call of Duty World War II campaign. I actually did. I had fun with it. But the best shooter campaign this generation um, has been, my opinion, for, for like your your competitive shooters like your Call of Duties, Destinies, etc. Splatoon 2. Um, no, not that. Um, Titanfall 2. I know. <laughs> Titanfall 2 is fantastic. And it didn't like it, it introduced you to some things you'd see in multiplayer, but it didn't feel like a multiplayer tutorial. Like there was an actual story to it. It was good. It was fun. It was really, really well done. And then you see other ones, like some of the ones you mentioned, that are just tutorials to get you into multiplayer and really to get you into to start getting into the the loot crates. But yeah, I. I, I think that era, though, is nearing an end. I think we'll still see good single-player modes and campaigns with games like Halo and Gears of War, stuff like that. But those, I would argue, are more story-based games to begin with. And the multiplayer is sort of taking on a life of its own in those games. But games like Call of Duty and Destiny are multiplayer-based games. And I, I thought the the story, and I think we all agree, in Destiny 2, like the, the basic campaign and the original release of that game was garbage. 
Wait, that was the most original sci-fi story ever told. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Not even okay. close. No, <laughs> it wasn't. So, anyway, I mean, I mean, good for Call of Duty, though, for putting up the sales numbers. They made $500 million in three days. That's amazing. So, good for them. I, I think the, the rumors of Call of Duty's demise are greatly exaggerated. So, they're just fine. But, uh, but anyway, Graham... Disappointing news for you. Is it? A game, yeah, a game you've been looking forward to for a long time. Uh, Days Gone has been delayed again, this time until April 26, 2019. Uh, the last release date we got uh, from Sony was February 22nd, 2019. I personally think they're just doing this to get out of the way of the onslaught of games we're going to see in January, and especially on February 22nd. I think they're doing it to get out of the way. It's after The Division 2 as well. So, Graham, I want to go to you first. I know you're crushed. No, say it ain't so. No, <laughs> I needed another zombie game right away. Uh, no, I really don't care um, for a, a lot of reasons. But I'd be really surprised, and you guys should be really surprised if you hear me say, I bought Days Gone. Because it, it's going to be like an 11. They're going to have to even... De- push it up even past 10 because <laughs> i have no desire to play this game whatsoever having said that <laughs> i might i might play it who knows but uh, i have no desire graham i'm personally when it comes to zombie games i'm more looking forward to overkill's walking dead yes me too I, to, to be honest like not hating on playstation or anything the, not, nothing about this game has ever really grabbed me steven what about you yeah um Honestly, well, they didn't show much of it at E3 last year, and, like, I knew it was coming, but that was about it. I, like, finding the trailers to put in the Twitch chat uh, for for you guys was the first time I actually watched a trailer for the game. Because I I don't think they showed it at E3 last year. At least I don't remember it. No, they didn't. They didn't. Um, No, they didn't. So, yeah, it's a zombie game. That's about all I know. Um was was this the zombie game where like the dude was running away and there were like thousands of zombies? Horde zombie. Him? It's horde yes. zombies. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Then I, okay, so I have seen one thing about it, and actually it did look cool based on that trailer. But I don't know. I mean, I, I want to wait on the reviews. I don't think this is day one for me. It doesn't really bother me that it got delayed because February twenty second was a day that was full of games, anyways. Um, mm-hmm. Though I don't think April is that much clearer. For, for games and honestly a two month delay I, I wonder what that what what that's about uh, but I know there I'm sure there are people excited and it sucks for them but it's only two months you just hope it's not like Crackdown where it gets delayed like seven million times or literally every other PlayStation game that's ever yeah out. well there were um, there was some speculation Stephen that this is part of why PSX isn't happening. Because they just don't have enough new things to show from this game close to release to make it worthwhile yeah. to have the event. Because this is the next big release for them. Like, the, the other two, the other ones they've showed off, like uh, um, Ghost of Sh- uh, Tsushima and Death Stranding, those are, like, forever away. We're not seeing those games for a while. Yeah. And even The Last of Us 2 is probably not coming out until the year after next. Yep. So... I'd be really surprised if we see Last of Us in, in 2019. I think that's a 2020 release. So, all right. And finally, let's end on a fun note. Our friend, Philip, has, uh, Philip Mewson, has reappeared. And he posted a YouTube video where he still won't freaking take responsibility for what he did. Like, it was sort of an apology, but not really. He was like, I, you know, I've reflected a lot on you know, what I've been through, you know, poor me. And I've learned from it, and I want to read you guys the quote that, uh, quoting him from the comment that he put on his own YouTube video. So it says, quote, Hey everyone, in the past several weeks, I've learned a multitude of hard lessons that continue to remind me of my missteps and the steps that I need to take to make things right. I would like you to know how truly sorry I am I apologize sure. to everyone personally affected, as well as the entire gaming community. From here on out, I will do everything in my power to make things right. I will continue to work on being a better person every day, and hope that will be reflected in my actions to come. Thank you, Philip. End quote. Well, 
If you want to do everything in your power to make things right, then freaking admit what you did and take ownership for it. Which he still will not do. Steven, I know you feel strongly on this as well, so I want to go to you. Well, I do feel strongly, but there's nothing more to say that hasn't already been said by me um, or by everyone. Like, he's just... At the, he's never going to apologize. He doesn't think what he did is wrong, or he doesn't think what he did is that wrong, because if he did, he would have apologized. I don't think he understands how bad plagiarism is, and I don't think everybody... Well, I say everybody, but it's not that many people, but there are a few people that defend him. I don't think any of them understand why plagiarism is so bad. Uh, they're like, well, I, I bet you they're of the mindset, well, if you know, if they were so good, they'd be bigger right now, so you know, who cares? Um, and so, you know, screw him. Uh, I'm not going to watch any of his stuff. I watched his apology through a reaction video because I refuse to give him clicks. I don't recommend giving him clicks. It's not worth it. Um, I, I don't hope many people fail, but I don't necessarily want him to succeed. He doesn't deserve no, it. You, you know he monetized this video just well, because everybody's going to want to see it, right? Yep. And no, see for if sure. he finally owns up. So. For sure. Yeah. He's, a, he's kind of. He's not a piece of garbage, but video game industry wise, like it's pretty pretty close. So I, I don't want to, you know, beat a dead horse here, but I I just want him to go away because I hope he. I just don't hope he succeeds. I don't. He doesn't deserve it. He doesn't deserve any success anymore. He and he's lost any chance of goodwill. Like at this point, an apology from him is just. I, I won't accept it. it. You. I feel like it's because it, he has to at this point if he yeah, does it. You know. The on, yeah. The only way to come back would have been with an apology. If he would have came back with an honest to god apology and that's it, not a review of s- some product, then fine. And maybe I would have like, and then then I would have given him maybe a chance. Um, yep. It probably would have helped him actually because people would have wanted to see how he went on from there. But for me, no, you're done. You're done. I refuse yeah, to even my- think about you. Because, by the way, Graham, that's what he did in the video. He he kind of talked about it for about, I don't know, a minute. And then was, all right, let's get on to this product review. As if it's over, nothing happened, nothing to see here. Business as usual. I know you probably didn't. I, I, I don't think you felt as strongly about this as the, me and Steven did. But kind of what are your thoughts on the guy and his attempted comeback here? Well, I know in journalism, the one golden rule is you don't plagiarize and you don't continuous pla- continuously plagiarize. And like I said, he was given the opportunity to try to make things right, at least make a step in the right direction and admit what he did and apologize to certain people that he singled out in other comments and stuff like that. But this is just some, like, generic, run-of-the-mill, blah, 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 I better say this. and But I don't think people are buying it. People are like, we that is not sincere whatsoever. You did not learn your lesson, and you didn't admit to the serious things that you did. So, yeah, like, people are like, just go away. Like, I'm hoping that he doesn't. Because, you know, like people say, there's no such thing as bad news and you get all this publicity from doing this thing. But he doesn't deserve it whatsoever. So I'm hoping that it'll just start just to evaporate and just go away, just fade away into the background. And he doesn't deserve any support. So uh, like the guy was saying, don't visit his channel. If you want to see, like, basically what he said and stuff like that, just go to reaction videos because those people actually come up with their own stuff and yeah that's all i gotta say all right well uh, with that fun story that's gonna do it for news this week guys and let's head into releases where on xbox you can get we talked about it in intros paw patrol on a roll on the 23rd year on xbox uh if you've pre-ordered the game right graham yes yeah, you can play the Fallout 76 beta starting on the 23rd. And remember, that's not, like, open forever. Like, it's they're going to have specific times per day that the beta is live. So, you know, just uh, be aware of that and, and keep up to date on that. So you can make sure you get in as much as possible. I know Graham will. And finally, if those don't do it for you, I guess you can get Red Dead Redemption 2 next Friday. Also available on PlayStation 
and uh, switch. Oh, actually, Graham, it's not. Sorry. Um, mm-hmm. oh. <laughs> it's just on Xbox and PlayStation. You can still get overcooked, uh, Graham. You're having a lot of fun with the second one. Yes. Uh, you can get overcooked through the 31st. Victor Brand um, through the 15th of November. And finally, through backwards compatibility, Hitman Blood Money through the 31st of October. Stephen, what do you have for PlayStation? Well, real quick, as far as Red Dead Redemption 2 goes, if you haven't played the first one, there's a great video by Tim Rogers of Kotaku that kind of sums up the first one. It's about... 30 minutes long it tells a story it's pretty funny um those of you who recent listened recently t- to the show know that i'm i'm a pretty big fan of his work uh highly recommend going and check it out but as far as playstation releases uh all three games that i'm gonna mention come out on the 23rd you can get nickelodeon kart racers uh you can get spider-man the heist which is dlc uh new game plus is also available for those of you that are interested in that and a real quick news item that I'm gonna pop in here is that the, it's kind of funny. The place, the Sony or the Spider-Man developers kind of trolled players that complained about the lack of puddles uh, when the game came out. Those of you that were following us or just news in general back when the game was releasing know that fans were a little upset that there were puddles missing from a trailer that happened at E3 to when the trailer that came out right before the game came out. And so now they ha- they they kind of trolled players and added the ability to add puddles in to the photo mode. And they're like these little cartoon puddles is pretty funny. I go look at their Twitter um, to see. They're basically it. like yeah. stickers, right? Yeah, they're they're basically stickers. It's it's hilarious to me because um, we kind of deserve it for some of the the complaint that's <laughs> we have. Some of them are so silly. Uh, and then sorry, f- finally. Though you can get Castlevania Requiem, Symphony of the Night, and Rondo of Blood on the 23rd. That's a re-release. First time available on PS4. For PS Plus games, you can get Laser League and Friday the 13th, the game, through the end of the month and a couple days in November. Uh, Graham, Nintendo releases. Well, one of my favorites. I've been waiting a year for this because it comes out every year. And that is Just Dance 2019, people. You heard it here. It is coming out on the 23rd. And then, once you're done dancing or tired or you need a break from dancing, because I know I do sometimes, uh, there's a couple other games on the 25th you could play, and those are Super Hyper Active Ninja, which kind of got some little dance sound to it. And then, to celebrate Halloween coming up, there is Friday the 13th Killer Puzzle, which will also be on the 25th. And that is all I have. All right, thank you, Graham. Let's go to Steven. What do we have for questions from our community? Fan mail. All right, questions. Um, let's see here. We have first question from Philip Evans. Asked, do you have any gaming secrets? Games you are embarrassed to admit you are a fan of? Um, I'll go first here while, while these two think. I am not embarrassed of anything. Um, like I, I said, my, one of my favorite movies is Mean Girls. Um, I, I will watch. I will. I'll watch and play almost anything if it looks anywhere good. Um, but I guess some people like get you know a little embarrassed by playing Nintendo Dogs or like Animal Crossing. Um, those are two games I'm a huge fan of. I hope they make Nintendo Dogs on the Switch, and I'm excited for the new Animal Crossing game. And so I guess those are the two things that some people might be embarrassed of. But I don't care. Those games are fun. So that's that's me. Graham, what about you, bud? Do I have any gaming secrets? Uh, no, I don't. Th- nothing comes to mind, really, because it's a secret, and that's why nobody's going to know about it. No, I don't have any really gaming secrets. Games that I'm embarrassed to admit that I am a fan of. Uh, Fallout. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Um, and nothing comes to mind. If something pops up, I will butt in and I'll let you guys know, but I'm not embarrassed what games I play. If I enjoy it, then why not? There's maybe some songs I might be embarrassed that I listen to, <laughs> but we're not going down that road. This this is video yeah. games. Graham was singing that. Backstreet Boys before we went live. I didn't start singing it. <laughs> <laughs> if that was me that started singing it. I'm not no shame. That. No That's- shame. No, but seriously, no, uh, that's, I don't have anything right no, now. For me, you, uh, yeah, I won't say I'm like embarrassed, but I, I can think of one game in particular. It got reviewed terribly 
Um, most people kind of crapped on the game, but personally, I thought it was really fun. It was like corny fun. It's called Eat Lead, The Return of Mad Hazard. It was on Last Generation on the 360. The only reason I ever played it is because uh, back when, you know, we had these places called Blockbuster or Hollywood Video, uh, they, they offered this, like, Game Pass or whatever where you could go and just, you pay a monthly fee and just go check out games and whatnot, kind of before Redbox took over. But... Uh, I, I picked it up with that because, you know, I can keep checking out games for, you know, no cost uh, as long as I'm paying the monthly fee. So I tried it and I'm like, wow, this is kind of cool and fun. Like, it's not good. I can tell, like, the mechanics aren't great, but had a good time with it nonetheless. And I laughed uh, a little bit playing it. So uh, games like that are always fun. And Stephen, before we go to you, though, that sound means it's time for our clue this week. For all our, our holiday giveaway, and just real quick, I know we've got a couple new people in Twitch right now watching us. Um, we're doing a giveaway of a Nintendo Switch console, and every single week on the show, we have a clue uh, that's geared towards something that we thought of from the video game world. And if you are the first one to correctly guess it, you only get two guesses. That's the limit. But you can submit your guesses through Discord or Facebook using the Google Docs uh, form there. But our clue this week is I've seen my share of violence. So again, I've seen my share of violence. That's our clue for week three of 12 of our holiday giveaway. And if you missed the previous clues, the only way to get them is go back and listen to the two previous episodes to hear those and again we don't play them at, so we don't do it at the same time every week we do it at different times so make sure you listen to the whole thing to hear when that clue is given so, all right steven what do you got for the next question all right next question asks uh from kc asks why does graham hate great games so much like red dead redemption okay i do not hate it i just <laughs> it's not my game i respect it i know other people like the game and that's cool for them, and I'm happy for them, but I don't hate them. <laughs> you guys make me like a hater of Red Dead 2, but it's not true. Uh, I did play some of uh, Red Dead Redemption. It did not hook me. Um, so, yeah, no hate, just not playing it. Graham, you played like five minutes of Red Dead Redemption. Don't even give me that you played it. <laughs> but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Graham Next just question. doesn't... Graham likes being being the, you know, difficult. Like, when, when people are like, we like this stuff, Graham's like, I hate it. That's just Graham's personality. You're just going to have to deal with it. But only for some things. Because other things, Graham is, is all on board the bandwagon there. Uh, next question, though. Ty, well, unless, Tyler, you have anything to add? To no, I Graham think Graham's fun? hatred of great games speaks for itself. Yeah, so. there you go. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's let's go with Nuka's question, uh, somewhat related. With Red Dead Redemption Two around the corner and online being in a month, what would you like to see from it to keep you hooked? Also, why does Graham hate this game already? <laughs> um, Graham, refer to last answer. <laughs> um, yeah, but I hate it because it's fun and fun sucks. I don't That's like fun. I'd rather Yeah, Graham, it's miserable. the same reason you like the Maple Leafs. They, they don't win. You hate winning. Yeah. Ooh, so ooh. Not true. Yeah. Not true. Any Leaf fan there there, you know you know it's lies. Just plug your ears. He, he also that's the, that's why Graham's he likes the Leafs player next weekend. That's right. That's right. <laughs> 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 he, he he also is a huge fan of Breath of the Wild because he hates fun. And yeah. that game is just it, it sucks all the fun out of it. <laughs> Uh, that Steven was a I, that was a joke. Okay, so Steven, don't go don't, ahead first. At me. don't <laughs> at me an email. Um, Adam, Adam. No, I'll go. I'll go first. I, if if they have a lot of different like heists and like co op takedowns of like outposts or whatever, I I can't remember exactly what they were called in Red Dead Redemption One, but you could do all the you know the the little like fort that Bill Williamson was in. Um, you could take that down online together. That was really fun to do with people. And, like, you could attack the the horse wranglers. That It was one of the first missions in the game, and you could do it online with, with other people. If they have a lot of stuff like that, and you have, like, 
bank heists or train heists, like kind of taking what they what they did well in the campaign from GTA Five, and and transferring it to Red Dead Redemption Two, I could see myself playing this game for for a little bit, as long as the people I play with, <coughs> Tyler, still play the game. Then and honestly, yeah. what my the people I play with play affects what I play. If I'm playing a game yeah. and none of my friends play, I'm not going to play it because I just, you know, again, FOMO. But that's that's my <laughs> answer. Uh, I, well, I you're feel- you're in luck. You're in luck, Stephen, because I'm looking for the exact same things you are. I want to see like the taking down of the forts, and I want to see heists, like train robberies and bank heists and stuff like that. Um, that interests me so much more than like wagon races and stuff like that you know yeah um if it was full of that i i'm I'm, i won't be playing for a long time yeah and and i'm not even looking for like a death match thing or anything like that i can get that in so many other games what i'm looking for um from red dead especially red Dead online to keep me going once i finish the campaign is those unique experiences that i can only get there and doing it with friends so i yeah i have no doubt if those things are there, we'll be playing it for quite a while. Graham, what you got next? I mean, Graham is not buying Red Dead, so I guess he can't answer this question. I forgot. Yeah, I have no, I have no expectations. <laughs> so, uh, it's when you guys J- had to enjoy it. JLT Stevens asks, which AAA title will be the last to join the Battle Royales craze before the style dies down? Halo. I agree. Graham? Yep, that, that sounds good to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, maybe gears. I mean, it, and it's probably well, I, Halo. I, and I, I think especially because Halo um, three four three has already said they don't have plans for it. They they have no plans to bring a, a battle royale mode to Halo five. Okay. Oh, Halo five. Yes, Halo six yeah. or Infinite or whatever. They're well, six. It. I mean, I think we're still two years away from six. I think yeah. I I stand by saying six is going to be a launch title for you know the Xbox two or seven twenty or whatever they end up doing. But I, I don't think they have any plans, uh, or they've say, they've stated they have zero plans to bring like a, a deal, free DLC for Battle Royale to Halo Five. All right, question for Graham here: What are the chances like a Battle Royale mode gets added to Fallout seventy six? And would you play it, or would you? Yeah, would you play it? Nah, <sighs> you know, I never ever thought about that. I, I'd try it. I, I don't think it would be something I would enjoy, but it almost seems like it's kind of set up that it could be like you have online multiple people That's on a server I mean. yeah like it, it does it, feel it, like it could happen it could kind of work but that would really surprise me i never expected to hear that we'll see yeah i mean the, I, I the just... funny go, go ahead, ahead Stephen. go ahead oh, yeah. i was just gonna say the funny thing is that out of the three of us like Steven, you and I probably like shooters much more than Graham does in terms of like pure shooter games. Um, but I feel like Graham's given Battle Royale games the most chance out of the three of us. I feel that way too. You have, because you played PUBG when it first came out, right? Yep. And you've played Fortnite a few times. I've dabbled. And I've dabbled in Fortnite. Yeah. You've dabbled, but you haven't dabbed, Graham, and that's the problem. <laughs> that's, that could be my problem. Yep. Uh, yeah, so that's why you have many chicken dinners. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I just kind of find that surprising because it, I would think you'd be the least likely to give it a go, just because you're the games you like, right, and and don't like. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you've given it the best I, shot. I'm a, I'm a complicated person. What can I say? And you're gonna try to play. Fortnite with an NHL player next weekend. So yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. NHL legend. A legend, you know. yes. Yeah, Mitch Marner. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> spoiler and, alert. And I'm not joking because you know that's what they described him as. So you know <laughs> what can yes, I quote? NHL or hockey legend, Mitch Marner. Yeah. Yes, ridiculous. But yeah. I'd actually give Fallout like Battle Royale a try if that happened. Um, I'm sorry, JLT Stevens. I I kind of went away from your question here, but that'd be like I could see that being kind of yeah. fun. Um, if you, if they did it well, it wouldn't be obviously a hundred players. Um, it'd probably be like 20, but it's still, if you made it a small map and you added some death claws in it, into it, like, you know, let's do it. <laughs> That's just my thoughts. Um, next question. Unless you guys have anything else. 
No, I think we got time for like two more. So let's, all right. Uh, well, next let's go. one. Next one's quick. Harrikin asks, my question is, why did you guys completely ignore Soul Calibur six during your new release segment? And uh, it's because we hate Soul Calibur. No, <laughs> it's honestly we just missed it. Um, sometimes when games get released on Fridays, because I think it just came out today, uh, it, it gets down the list that there's a lot of like you know kind of small indie titles in there, and we just miss yeah. it. So that's that's our bad and. We're sorry. Yeah, we're yeah, and we are not immune to mistakes. They happen. So, yeah, yeah we missed it. We apologize, and that's definitely a game we should have included on releases last week. So, yeah. our bad. Uh, yeah, we, we, if we was saw it, we would have because that's a big game. So, yeah. our bad. All right, last question here. Um, Xbox Toss asks, "Does it bother you guys to play games after release?" He says, "I'm just now playing Assassin's Creed Origins, and I'm having a great time." So I'll go first here real quick. I think it depends on the game. So we've kind of talked about this on the show before, but I feel like when it's a focused single player story and that's what the game is, like it doesn't matter when I play it. I can have just as much fun with it, you know, two years after release as I did at release. Now, maybe not 10 years after because I'm going to start to measure it against graphical changes and improvements and stuff like that. That sounds like Graham and Red Dead. A little bit. (laughs) <laughs> but but no i feel like if you're having a blast with origins like right now there's nothing wrong with that and origins isn't a game that relies on you doing anything competitive multiplayer so have at it man like that's games like that like i i, I i'm happy they exist but i feel bad for them at the same time because i feel like games like that get passed over by a lot of people at first because they're like well i'll just get it later because they, because Stephen, you mentioned FOMO a couple times. Like, people get FOMO with Call of Duty and Battlefield and games like that. Because they don't want to be behind. Yeah, and and rightly so. Because yeah. I'm with you. Um, the Call of Duty, Battlefield, even Halo to a lot of some extent, um, or a lot of extent, and Gears of War for the same thing. Like any multiplayer game, the the number of players that play, you know, go down as time goes on. And the people that are left are the people that are really good at the game or they've gotten really good, you know, or the people that just love it. So when you get into Battlefield or Titanfall 2 or, you know, whatever late in the game, and I I mentioned Titanfall because I got into Titanfall late uh, or Titanfall 2 late, like you don't have as much fun because everyone's pretty good and you just don't know the map. So you're at a disadvantage. And it's not yep. that, like, I'm, I'm a pretty good shooter. Um, I, I have a almost two KDA in Call of Duty right now. But, but Titanfall 2, I just didn't have fun in because I didn't know the maps. I didn't really know the nuance of the gameplay. And I kind of got, you know, I didn't get destroyed. I, 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 I was hanging around a 1, but 1's not good enough for me. And I just, I didn't play Titanfall because I didn't have friends that played Titanfall. And mm-hmm. the people I was playing with when t- I played Titanfall 2, they were terrible. One person couldn't get in in the game because the guy he was game sharing with at the time, like just for some reason he got in the game, but the the one who actually bought the game didn't get in, and the yeah. and the dude <laughs> that he was game sharing with was atrocious at shooters. It wasn't any fun, and now we're in a much like the people I play with now are much better at shooters, so it's a lot more fun. So I I think that shooters I I can see. It would it bother me to not play right after release, but games like Assassin's Creed Origins or any single player game, um, heck, even Kingdom Hearts, uh, <clears throat> wink, wink. There's a uh, collection coming out next week that you know that wouldn't bother me to play the first time because I mean it is remastered, but those games are good. So yeah, I don't think it bothers me for single player games, but it would for multiplayer games. Yeah. Now the only exception to that before I go to grandma before I let grandma answer is games like Red Dead Two that I'm just so hyped for. Yes. I would hate waiting for that game. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a single-player driven game, but I have been wanting this game ever since the day they first posted, like, that red image with the Rockstar logo on it. Yep. On Twitter, like, you knew what that was, and I've wanted the game ever since that day. So, yeah, 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 there's no way I'm waiting for that. I would agree. It depends on how, like, if I'm forced to wait for other reasons other than wanting it, or not mm-hmm. wanting it, then yes, it would bother me. But if it's if it's just a case of like I just not interested right now, then I, I don't care. Yeah. It doesn't bother yeah. me. I'll go back to it. Graham, how about you? No, it doesn't bother me 
whatsoever. Um, there's been times when I've went and played a game that's been out for a long time, and I went back and I enjoyed it and stuff like that. Like the guys were saying, when it's an online and like there's like timed events and stuff like that, then it seems like you need to be on it right away, or you're just not going to get the full experience with it. Yeah. But no, like go back and play those games just because the game's been out for a long time and you, you didn't play it. There's no reason to go back, not to go back and play it. Right. Like The Witcher Three, for example, people out there have not went and played The Witcher Three. You go back and play that game. That game is amazing. I will I will praise that on that game repeatedly, how great that game is. So, yeah, there's no shame in going back and the game's been out. And you get it like at a discounted price because sometimes I bought games. I'm like, I'm going to play that. And then I play maybe a little bit and then I just stop. Like Far Cry 5 is a good example. Mm-hmm. Um, I got into that one, but then I stopped. And that's a game I could have came back later, got it when it was on discount. But nope, I had to play it right away. So yeah, there's <laughs> yeah. There, no shame for sure. All right. Well, that does it for questions this week, but we have one more bit of business to take care of, and that's our monthly Patreon giveaway. Steven, who is our winner? All right. Well, the winner of $60 in gift cards to whatever console of their choice is uh, KC. Uh, appreciate you for being a patron. Thank you to everybody who is a patron. We appreciate all you more than you know. Um, yep. But KC this time is the winner, winner, chicken dinner for Grand congrats. PUBG. So, yes, congratulations. We will get those codes to you or the code to you. Uh, just let us know what you're interested in between the Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, and Steam if you wanted. Uh, and let us know, and, and that will be on your way. Tyler, take yep. it away. All right, so again, like Stephen said, uh, if you want to be entered to win the monthly giveaway for Patreon, the only way to do that is to become a patron of the show and help support us. So we would love it if you did that. Like Stephen said, we'd appreciate it more than you know. We are truly super appreciative of everyone who helps support this show and this community and what we're trying to do. Um, I want to send a special shout-out to, again, to Blake P. and Brian P. for becoming new patrons this last week. Appreciate that so much, guys. Thank you. We we really appreciate it, and we take everything to make the show uh, better and the community better. So, uh, if you join though at the five dollar higher level, you're entered to win. So, and you get more entries for the higher levels that you go. So, uh, the other way to help support us is through Twitch, uh, which we're uh, broadcasting on live right now as we record the show. And you can do that. Uh, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you get a free Twitch Prime Somebody use every single month. And you can help support us at no cost to you if that's the case. Uh, if you choose to spend that on us, we'd super appreciate it and be really thankful. Uh, if not, use it on somebody. Don't just let it sit there. It helps support somebody get better on Twitch and achieve their goals. So before we head into the, uh, the closing of the show and all the social media stuff... Graham, you have a special announcement to make. Do I? Oh, you yes, do. I do. Yes, all you people thinking I hating on Red Dead Redemption 2, well, I've got it pre-ordered and downloaded on my system. Oh, so my gosh! <laughs> I will be playing you guys it. tricked me! <laughs> <laughs> so we wanted everybody to have their fun and everybody submitted questions like, why does Graham hate Red Dead? And he actually sent me the image last night of it being owned and downloaded. Um, Graham, when did you buy it? Like, so I, a serious question. Like, what made you change your mind? Because you have been really hesitant on this for a while. So what made you change your mind? I watched some gameplay videos. And, yeah, it, it was pretty awesome. And I was kind of thinking, like, I'm a big Fallout fan. And Fallout 76, is it's like an online experience and stuff like that. And, like, I tried to do it with, like, ESO and... ESO and stuff like that, but I didn't really, really get into it. So I'm thinking this could be like my little tie over of not having a mainline Fallout. Because when I was watching too, I was kind of thinking, I'm like, yeah, that's pretty cool. And like, where there's just so much variance to what you can do and stuff like that. And like, I was just thinking, like, man, this game is pretty awesome. And it's like, it's probably going to look stunning in 4K HDR. So I'm like, yep, I'm doing it. So I did it. So, uh, so who advised you to watch the uh, the gameplay videos to to make your decision? Yes, I, you're, wel- I just, you're welcome, I, Graham. I, just, 
I just thought me. long and I just thought long and hard, and I'm like, I think I'm gonna look at some videos. So <laughs> you know, I got you know on what? old Google machine and I searched Red Dead Redemption Two uh, gameplay videos, and a couple mm-hmm. videos came up that, yep, kind of convinced me. Yeah. Okay. So I'm really happy for you, Graham, <laughs> because I stand by saying that this is maybe your type of game the most out of the three of us. Like you just love all this kind of stuff where you can go take your time, mess around, like do all these different things, you know, like Fallout or Zelda or whatever, Witcher, et cetera, et cetera. And I feel like you're going to have a blast with this game. So I'm happy for you. I'm glad you did. Do not cancel it. We'll be really disappointed. Yeah. No, I'm really excited for it. Uh, Good. A few times I wanted to say it when we were talking. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to play it. But I'm like, but I can't say it. You almost let it slip up. a couple times yeah, like, yeah, when yeah, the three yeah. of us were yeah. talking you, off you, air. You, you clued yeah. in on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, um, I'm glad we were able to keep the secret. Everybody had their fun, giving you giving you a hard time. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad you got it because I think you're going to love it. So, all right. Real quick, uh, we'd love to have you join the community uh, on Facebook, the Gaming Hub forums there, on Twitch, TXH Gaming Hub there. From either of those places, you can get a link to our Discord channel or Discord server. Uh, please click that and join. Uh, that's where we have some really active conversation, including channels for all the most popular games in our community. We'd love to have you take part in that. Uh, we have a YouTube channel, the Gaming Hub podcast there, and finally on Twitter at TXH Gaming Hub. And guys, anything else before we get out of here? One nope. week, boys and girls. One week. One week. One week. And I'll be By the way, too. this currently stands as one of our longest episodes ever, so uh, we're happy to do that. It was a good time Oops. tonight. A lot of stuff <laughs> to talk about. And uh, we had a lot of fun, so hopefully you enjoyed it. But uh, for Graham and Steve and I, am Tyler Sank, oh. thank you so much for joining. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. What, One what real quick thing, yeah, for, yeah, especially yeah. for those of you that are watching on Twitch. But we are recording at a special time next week uh, on Thursday instead of Friday. Yeah. So uh, the episode will be out a day earlier than normal. Yes. And that's because of a, a variety of things. And I won't lie, one of them is because Red Dead's coming out Friday. Yes, <laughs> that, that is part play. of it. Another is that I have like an 11-hour workday on uh, Friday. So, you know, that Twitter, sucks Steven. for me. Post on Twitter I'm about how you have to work long so hours. Much. Yeah, mm-hmm. It'll be like a 35-hour <laughs> work week next week. Like, that's just insane. <laughs> so, I don't mean to make anyway. light of the situation. <laughs> no, no, we're not, we're not making fun. It is a serious thing that I think there needs to be a discussion about these week conversations. So, all right. For Graham Stephen, for real this time, I am Tyler saying thank you so much for joining us for episode 129. We'll be back next week with episode number 130. Until then, everybody, have a great week. Stay safe, play great games, and we will talk to you soon. Take care, everyone.